So the Night of the Natrix has just gotten a new TLC, and you know that that means that I, Adam Wokta, will probably talk shit about it. Well, not really, but I can't really talk about the Latin's strength without mentioning its weaknesses. Now, the fighting style on this creature hasn't changed too much since the last time I covered this creature, however, you have received more options on how to fight. I'll cover those later, but for now let's first tackle the new arsenal. First off, we have a new passive ability, Moonlight Hunter, that increases your damage output and movement speed during night. Then for head abilities, where we have 4 options, and the first one being the standard bite. Then we have a new bite attack, Mangle, which causes bleed. This ability doesn't work if you are pounced, however. Then we have Raptor Strike, which increases damage output with each successful hit, perfect for when you lash onto enemies. Then the last ability, Shred, a quote unquote powerful attack that can only be used when lashed onto other creatures and cause stamina to use. For sense abilities, we have three options, the first one being Bloodlust, that decreases the damage output you can give, but increases the amount of bleed damage. Then we have Nocturnal, which increases your stamina recovery a whopping 50%, only during night though, however. The third ability is Skittish, basically reduces the cooldown on your pounce ability. For higher ability, we have three options, the first one being Night Stalker, that grants you several buffs during night. Then we have a new hide, Revitalize. Basically, when you're close to death, your health regeneration gets a major boost, but only to 25%. Stingy. The third hide ability, Scatter. Basically, it will make you jump when you detach from a latched enemy, making it easier for you to create distance between you and your enemy. For leg abilities, we have four options, and the first one being Leaping Start. Basically, when you crouch down for 10 seconds in a place, then when you uncrouch and start running, you will gain a major boost in speed. Though it's kinda limited with it only being usable during night. Then we got the famous pounce ability, basically one of the key features to deal damage as a raptor. Any raptor. Though it has received a major nerf with 50% less damage when latched onto enemies, so uh, you really kinda need to start focusing on bleed damage. Speaking of bleed abilities, Puncture, it's a kick that doesn't really do too much damage, its main focus is to keep your enemies from healing from your bleed, also it can be stacked up up to 2 times. Then the last ability, Ripping Kick, you do a kick that causes bleed, simple as that. For tail abilities, we have 3 options, the first one being Tail Fan, that grants you a major boost of speed for a short duration and short distance, perfect to get out of a hairy situation. Moonrunner will make you use less stamina when running during nighttime. also if you do it backwards while also saying <laughs> you will gain a major boost in style. Featherweight means that you can quite literally jump off a cliff and say this but a scratch. For voice abilities we have 4 options, the first one being Call of the Night Terrors. Stamina and damage output will be increased and it can also be stacked but it's only usable during night. Then we got his that decreases damage by a whopping 50% for a minute, also usable during whatever time you need it. Then we got Lord of Terrors, basically instead of boosting your own teammates stats you reduce the opponent's stats, also only usable during night. The last and final ability is Mob Rally, a call that increases damage output and can also be stacked up up to 10 times. Before we continue I should clarify that this will be a video focused on group plays. I mean, you can play solo, and in theory, you can win over an Apex if you just dodge its attack and keep it bleeding, however, in my case, I do not have the patience for it. If you do, then please, by all means. It also doesn't help with the fact that almost every creature's standard attack is a dangerous blow to you. With some meteors being able to almost one-shot you, and then Apexes who can straight up one-shot you. Even when their attacks aren't directed at you specifically, their attack output are really quite dangerous. In other words, group up. Don't make things more dangerous for you. You also discover that group plays as this thing is actually quite fun. The fighting groups, there are two major playstyles to fight as this creature. One is the damage dealer and the other one is the support or the bleeders. Yeah, I don't really have a name for it. 
some to be in the front line and the other to keep the enemy bleeding. This is the arsenal I recommend if you're trying to go for a damage build. This arsenal is not limited depending on the time of day, it can be used whenever. If your group are fighting Apexes, then the Raptor Strike can be switched over with Shreds, but I only recommend that if you're fighting Apexes. This is what I recommend for a bleed build, and unlike your damage output counterpart, you won't be pouncing on your enemies as often as they do, your main focus is to keep the enemy bleeding. Also to buff them with different calls, however those calls can be switched after what you prefer. For what subspecies you should choose, I would recommend the extra jump height. You see, you already have a really good stamina recovery and damage at night are, as the name suggests, only usable and helpful during night. Furthermore, the extra jump height may boost your movement and make you less predictable during fights. Also, by having a better jump, it might become easier for you to properly lash on onto other creatures. When fighting other low tiers, the strategy are pretty simple, just bomb rush them. Whenever you or a teammate are low on stamina or health, you or another teammate can jump in and take the focus. When fighting other low tiers, having bleeders aren't completely necessary, only mostly due to the fact that both of you are low tiers and that your health bar are kinda the same. If you play it correctly, you can just brute force it. Against mid tiers, you most definitely want to have a combination of both damage dealers and bleeders. And unlike your low tiers, even though your strategy still consists mainly of hit and run, you probably want a little bit more of coordination and planning in that. What I mean is that you can't just run in disregarding any potential counterattacks that they might dish out against you. The stat difference can't be ignored, and if they land a blow, it can be quite lethal, especially if it's on your head. Combine hit and run with damage dealing and bleed, and you'll be able to take out mid tiers without too much problem. Of course, there is the possibility of them using the terrain to their advantage, and if they do, there aren't really too much you can do about it. Of course, you can try to apply bleed and hopefully they'll die from blood loss, or the croc turning against them. However, you will be forced into a head-to-head -head brawl, and that is something you want to avoid. Fighting Apexes is a danger from the get-go. Not only due to the stat difference, but as I said before, they can quite literally one-shot you, even if you are at full health. Case in point, do damage if you can, but prioritize getting that bleed in, and for the love of everything, dodge the attacks, and after a time of struggle, you'll be able to take it out. Yes, I know it's a combination of literally everything attacking it, but you get the point.